Welcome to the second of two episodes based on a recent trip to Dartmoor in the West Country. This one concentrates mostly on astro and night photography, and the other one on the daytime trip and landscape photography. Well, hi there, welcome. It's been a long time. Finally, 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 we are allowed out and um, I'm on Dartmoor and I've come back to an old haunt. Um, I was hoping I'd do some astrophotography tonight. It's probably not going to happen, um, but I have brought the gear with me anyway, uh, just in case. And um, it, it, it's all wrong, really. It's going to be cloudy mostly, and um, also we're going to have some uh, have a very bright moon. Uh, it's going to be a full moon, 99.8%, something like that, according to cloudy outside. Uh, no photo pills, and. Um, and it's a super moon, so it's going to be super bright uh, as well, which is hopeless for anything remotely to do with the Milky Way. But nevertheless, I'm here and I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to make the most of it. It's quite a hazy day, so there's quite a lot of atmospheric, so that wouldn't do for great night sky photography either. But nevertheless, I'm here and I'm loving being out. There's something about being in this place that every time I make it here just kind of makes you feel alive. It's brilliant. Now, I brought with me um, this evening my, oh, let's stop that flapping, my Move, Shoot, Move Star Tracker and my Nikon D750 uh, with the F, uh, sorry, the 20mm uh, F1.8 lens. I have not yet had an opportunity to try out that combination and uh, I am hoping that in some way, shape or form tonight I might be able to do that. But uh, if I show you uh, the level of cloud cover, um, you will appreciate my pessimism <laughs> uh, that that's actually going to take place. This is one of my favourite views on the moors and uh, I have taken a couple of nice pictures from here in the past. Um, not sure it's really going to light up tonight, uh, but we'll, uh, we'll see. And um, I thought that these big boulders, these rocks um, from the tour, might make quite a nice study for a um, for a bit of light painting uh, later, and, uh, but we'll see. Um, it's going to be a full moon, so uh, the landscape itself will actually be quite well lit, and it will be lit from um, behind and to the left of where we're, where we're looking. It will rise to our left, and, um, and so we'll get a bit of side light on the tour over there and on the stones here. Um, maybe too much light uh, if it come, does come through the cloud. Uh, but um, talking of cloud, it's really, yeah, it's not looking great, is it? <laughs> the chances of me being able to use uh, the Star Tracker are pretty much nil. Apart from anything else, I will not be able to locate the North Star, I'm afraid. Yeah, still not looking like I'm going to get stars. There might be, you never know, just enough light and just enough um, going on for me to be able to do uh, a bit of light painting. 
So with the uh, benefit of the little bit of light that is um, left me at the minute, I thought that I might just introduce you then to the Move Shoot Move Kit and, uh, and explain how I've got it set up. So I've got this set up uh, on my um, normal Manfrotto uh, tripod. It's sturdy enough for this, uh, for this job. I've used it a bit and uh, it seems to work okay. Provided that is that I secure it well enough to the ground, particularly if there's uh, any you know, much of a wind at all. Um, there's lots of different ways uh, that you can set up the Move Shoot Move. Now, I bought the package that included as much as possible, basically. So the wedge uh, from um, Move Shoot Move, or whatever they call themselves, uh, which is this bit here. And, um, and then that attaches through uh, a quick release plate to the actual uh, tracking device itself, which is this block here. And, um, and that can be mounted um, in a couple of ways. It can either be mounted by a little um, quarter 20 um, screw hole here, um, or uh, it can be mounted as I have mounted it uh, through the base uh, of it there. I prefer that because it makes these buttons uh, more accessible, I think. Uh, also, it shortens the whole uh, setup uh, in terms of its, uh, its physical length. So instead of having the whole length of this sticking out that way, which would be about four inches. We've just got an inch and a quarter or so depth here, which means that there's less leverage on everything uh, when it comes to putting a heavy DSLR on it. So I prefer that method. Uh, I then got a small uh, little Manfrotto uh, ball head here, uh, which is attached to the actual part of the MSM move shoot move that rotates there. And, um, and very broadly speaking, I have set this up so this axis that runs through the middle of the move shoot move would be pointing roughly north. That's only going to help if I can actually see any stars uh, this evening, of course. And then uh, attached to the ball head is my Manfrotto quick release plate, and so the camera would go on there. And I'll, I would be shooting quite often in a southerly direction, which is broadly speaking that way uh, at the moment. And, uh, and so I've got it set up so that the camera would, would mount on here in that, uh, in that direction. And, uh, and because of the way that I've oriented the move, shoot, move, I've got lots of scope here to be able to tilt tilt the Nikon from just below horizontal to you know a fairly steep angle uh, if I want to if I want to do that. The other thing that I've done also which is worthy of note is that I have put on the Nikon itself an L bracket so that I can mount the camera in either in this is terrible isn't it either in a vertical uh, portrait orientation uh, or in a landscape, more traditional landscape uh, orientation. So that's, um, sorry, that is just very briefly, oh, we still had a little bit of light, how the, uh, how I set up at least the Move Shoot Move tracker. Uh, I may, uh, if people are interested, do some more detailed stuff on the, uh, on the tracker. Uh, for those who uh, maybe are interested in, in obtaining one or, or knowing how to, how to actually use it. Um, it's not fully set up yet uh, for this evening because I don't think I'm actually going to get an opportunity to, uh, to use it. But we shall see, shall not we? There's a little bit of, little bit of clear sky uh, above me developing at the moment. Um, you never know. Look at that. Uh, but then if I go to the left... Uh, which is where the moon is going to be rising over there. Uh, it's pretty cloudy at the moment, fairly dark grey clouds. Uh, but the weather is coming from that direction and there is some, some clear banding there. Uh, certainly by about three, four o'clock in the morning, uh, the forecast is that we're probably actually going to have some, some rain. So 
Uh, if I'm going to be able to do anything, it's going to be during the next, um, well, up to about two o'clock probably at, at most. I don't think anything significant is going to happen now until uh, it's properly dark. Uh, so sunset was about 8.20, two hours on top of that, about 10.20 is when it, we would reach astronomical twilight, roughly speaking. Um, so I think I might just go and chill for a little bit, have a drink and, uh, and a little nibble on some nuts and, uh, and I'll see you guys later. Actually, I omitted to mention one of the most um, important aspects of this, uh, which is how to actually set it up to uh, point towards uh, the North Star. So um, I've got attached to the move shoot move here uh, a little bracket that comes with it. Uh, it doesn't matter really exactly where on the on the move shoot move device you put this it could be down here here it could be the other side if there was room as long as it's um, this hole uh, that goes through it is pointing along the axis um, that uh, that is going to be pointing towards the the north star so it needs to align with the central axis that goes through uh, the move shoot move tracker and then um, attached into that hole uh, secured by this little nylon nut here uh, is uh, a laser pointer um, won't be able to see it uh, at the moment but uh, it is indeed a laser pointer and you can point that basically at the north at the north star at polaris and that will get you pretty that will get you a pretty accurate uh, setup uh, for tracking provided that you have properly leveled your um, properly leveled your system. Um, talking of which the the mount that I'm using here on the tripod um, the plate uh, does actually have a, uh, uh, a little spirit level on it which is uh, very useful for, for getting that sorted out. The other thing that you can get with it is this device here uh, which is the polar scope and um, so again you can set that up uh, on the uh, uh, on the um, on the move shoot move through that little bracket uh, once you've got uh, got it roughly in the right place in the right alignment uh, and that can get you you can use that to get yourself a more accurate uh, alignment uh, with uh, with the northern with the north star with Polaris uh, or a more accurate northerly orientation rather because uh, uh, Polaris isn't exactly due um, north, it's very close, but it's not exactly. Uh, the polar scope helps you to get uh, an even more accurate orientation for your camera. Um, so there you go. Let's hope I get an opportunity to use it a little bit later on. Well, good evening again. Um, it's nearly 10 o'clock and uh, at the moment we have pretty much full cloud cover. So not a peep of sky at the minute. So. Um, Probably not going to get any shots in tonight from the look of it. Uh, we shall see. Um, if I wake up at an appropriate time, I should pop my head out and see whether or not we've got any star or sky action. And if we do, you never know, I might be able to get out and take a shot or two. Uh, but for now, I'm probably going to just get a little bit of kip. Well, hello, folks. Uh, it's about quarter to one and uh, just poke my head out the uh, outside the tent and uh, unfortunately it is raining and we have uh, pretty much 100% cloud cover so uh, I don't think there's going to be any more photography tonight. Okay so the time's about uh, 20 to 2 and uh, the rain has stopped. Uh, we've still got complete cloud cover but there is enough moonlight there to be able to see the landscape dimly. And so uh, I thought I can't really come all of this way and not do something. So, uh, so I have been uh, up on the tour doing a little bit of light painting and uh, spent most of that time desperately trying to get images in focus. I think I, think I finally succeeded uh, with a shot. Um, so about, I think I took a stack of 12 light painting uh, images. Uh, hopefully I've got the tour in the distance nice and sharp. 
I'm not sure whether or not the near distance is sharp. Um, we shall see, I shall have to have a good look on the camera in the morning and uh, see what I managed to get. Anyway, there you go, that was a little bit of fun. Time now, I think, for a bit of sleep. Well, good morning everyone and welcome to breakfast. Dartmoor style porridge oats with honey, something like that. A cup of coffee. Had a little apple earlier, just to get some energy going and start to warm me up. Well, that was actually a pretty good night in all sorts of ways. Firstly, it barely rained at all. Secondly, it's not raining now, uh, which it was forecast to, uh, which is great. Um, it didn't get, I think, quite as cold as I was expecting it to. So, so I ended up wearing almost everything that I have. Uh, I didn't need to wear my uh, the shell for my coat system. So that was another another bonus. Well, I suppose I would have to say that last night was really fairly typical of um, the lot that awaits anybody who decides that they want to get into uh, nightscapes or astrophotography, uh, which is that most of the time uh, it just doesn't work out and it just takes a lot of patience and you have to keep trying again and again and again and then occasionally the elements combine and luck combines to allow you to get the shot that you actually wanted to do and planned for and sometimes you just have to accept there isn't a shot to be had <laughs> well it never ceases to amazing amaze me just uh, how much junk I managed to bring with me and uh, that it all goes back more or less in that bag. So it's time to say goodbye to this place. Uh, the rain is just about holding off. I uh, had a few spit spots that prompted me to get everything in the bag back then, uh, but actually it's just about held off. So I'm not gonna put the rain covers on. Uh, I've got about a mile and a half or so walk back to the car, not too bad at all. And uh, looking forward now to a, a nice, quiet, hopefully, drive home. Well, thank you for watching this all the way to the end. Uh, this particular video has really concentrated on the astro or night shoot side of this trip. If you'd like to see more uh, about the daytime landscape photography, uh, and some aspects of the trip during the day, particularly a rather amazing encounter with some horses, uh, then please click the link below and uh, enjoy a little bit more of my trip down to the West Country in April. Thanks for watching and look forward to seeing you all again soon. Bye for now.